Hello everyone, my name is Wojtek Borel. I'm with Content.ai, uh, one of the leading enterprise headless content management systems. And today I'm here with my colleague Martin. Uh, Martin, welcome. How are you today? Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks Wojtek for having me. I'm doing quite great uh, actually today and I'm more than excited to talk about the future with AI, but also uh, with about the challenges that are coming with this future. So quite excited to be here. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, and I'm uh, happy that you're doing uh, great. Uh, anyway, uh, today in this webinar, uh, as Martin a little bit a little bit mentioned, we are going to talk about how you can leverage AI not only to maximize value, but also ensure content security at, a, at the same time. And you might be wondering why actually today there's two of us, um, both with different backgrounds. And the reason is very simple. Uh, today we're going to discuss quite emerging technology. And with every technology, there are always two perspectives needed to really properly evaluate it. The first perspective is uh, the business perspective, today represented by Vojta. Uh, he's going to share his views uh, and his uh, perception of the opportunity and the risks. And then uh, myself, I'm going to provide the technologist perspective on, on this quite exciting technology and the concerns there. Sounds great. So thanks, Martin. And uh, let's kick it off. So uh, let me switch to the next slide. There we go. Uh, first thing I want to say is that I think it's pretty clear to everyone on the market who uh, who monitors the, the news about uh, AI and ChatGPT and all the trends that the AI genie is out of the bottle and there's literally no no way back. So uh, let me just support this, this claim with uh, some numbers from Gartner actually. So first, not only 76% of marketers already report today that they are already using generative AI, but more importantly, over 60% of CMOs and marketing leaders plan to invest into generative AI in the next two years. And last but not least, on top of that, everyone, everyone who participated in the survey uh, mentioned or reported that they expect Gen AI to be just a normal, just a regular part of their technology stack within six years. However, I would like to bring this to the reality of 2023. I would say, at least from our experience, 2023 was, uh, was a tough year for everyone. And more than ever, more than ever, I would say both IT and marketing teams are uh, asked to do more with less. And it's it's tempting. It's really tempting uh, to uh, to try to deliver more value through AI, especially on the marketing side. I can tell you as a marketing leader myself, if you have less staff, if you have lower budgets, it just feels sort of like uh, low hanging fruit to put AI in the mix and expect magic. But Martin, is it is it so easy just to put it in the mix and and um, expect magic? Well, not really, because then we uh, are seeing situations where the uh, chief marketing officer comes to the uh, CIO and uh, they get a bit of reality check. And it is supported uh, again by the Gartner data. Uh, we see that only a third of uh, CIOs and, and CTOs they interviewed uh, in the survey uh, did not consider uh, mass gen AI adoption as a, a security concern that actually two thirds of the whole audience had some concerns. Um, there were some that were already deploying some of the uh, specialized uh, security tooling to prevent uh, any issues. Uh, but what was quite, I would say the most important finding there, um, especially for me was that almost half of the inter uh, interviewed people really perceived lack of governance around security and um, policies regarding AI in the organization as a major barrier to actually adopt the AI tooling in, in their workflows. So for me, that really raised the question, how do different organizations address the security concerns uh, in their organizations? And this is what actually brings us to today's topics. How do the organizations really can leverage AI to maximize the uh, value out of the content management system, but also make sure that their systems are ready for the government uh, and the enterprise uh, governance and, and enterprise security. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so uh, to answer this question, Martin and I actually prepared today six takeaways for you, six tips or recommendations, and we will provide you free recommendations, as, as we mentioned, from business side and free recommendations from the technology side. So let's check it out. So first, uh, let me start with, with the why. As, as obvious as uh, it may sound, you would be surprised how many companies are just jumping on the AI bandwagon without setting the clear goals for implementing AI. If you ask them, and uh, don't take me wrong, uh, we talk to the customers who uh, implement AI every single day yeah, because it's in our nature of, of our product. And if you ask some organizations, very often you will hear these general reasons uh, for implementing AI. We want to produce more content. We want to have content that performs better. We want to improve processes. We want to speed up time to market. We want to optimize or better even decrease the marketing spend. Uh, we want to decrease customer acquisition costs and so on and so forth. Well, let me tell you one unpleasant uh, truth. Everyone will be doing that. Everyone will be saying that. And uh, there's actually a better way to think about this. Uh, when talking about start, starting with why, uh, as I mentioned, we tried to come up with some solid uh, strategy with our customers who are already doing that. And we actually um, comprised these findings and defined three types of ROI uh, of implementing uh, the AI, the financial, procedural, and experiential returns. And I would say AI plays a really critical role in achieving all of these returns. Um, however, going back to the starting with why, our strong recommendation is just to choose one of these returns uh, and double down on it. And if you double down on it, uh, then the other returns will sort of follow organically. Yeah? But if you try to do everything at once, most likely you will not succeed at least in the in the near term, in, in, the, in the short term. So my first recommendation is really to choose one of these uh, financial procedure or experience returns and double down on it. In the long run, uh, it will it will definitely pay off. Over to you, Martina. Yeah, so um, I would add that once you um, select those goals, uh, you need to start thinking about the tooling. And what you will uh, see when you start exploring the market that there is a plethora of tools you can choose from. There are, I would even call thousands of different AI tools. Um, and you will need to do your due diligence right. Um, because what you will find that uh, just because there are two tools that are doing the same thing, doesn't mean that you will always get the same results. And on the next slide, you will see um, a great example of that. So what, what I put on the slide are different tools essentially offering you um, improve the content capability. Uh, and each of them is doing it slightly differently. Some of them uh, are going to uh, improve the text on the fly. Some of them are going to um, do several improvements in one go. And some of them will allow you, such as Content AI, allow you to select, for example, another item to get the information from that item to apply it on the current one. So there are, you see that they are essentially solving the same use case in different ways. Some of those ways might be better suited for your organization. So you need to start thinking, what is the value that I'm getting from this tool? How is it going to be used in, in the processes and uh, what I'm trying to achieve? What, what, what are the gains? There's another angle you need to think of. Uh, eventually, the functionality that we see today as the primary focus will become standardized. What we will see is that capabilities that today we see as AI generative skills will essentially become the new text editor. In every editor, you will have an option to summarize, uh, to simplify their language, or to a degree improve it. There will be capabilities for spell checking, all the things um, that are the most obvious use case uh, for um, generative AI. So think about the value that you will get from these tools that is added on top of that. Think about what you can get. So my takeaway from for you um, is, really think about what you're trying to achieve and what does the tool offer you and think about what do they offer you on top of that basic functionality think about how the vendor thinks about your workflows how they think about uh, your problems on on, on uh, a daily basis and think uh, on how they think um, about helping you 
uh, at scale. So really think about that value that you can get out of the tooling. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Martin. So let's say that uh, you have set the right goals and you have even achieved to uh, to choose the right tools. But now uh, we need to realize that we live in a time when really people expect to find the information or find particle content or particle data immediately. Yeah? And I would say that uh, with AI, this uh, this claim that you see on the screen, the right content delivered at the right time to the right person, is no longer just a marketer's dream. It's it's a must, yeah? uh, because uh, with with AI, literally everyone will be able to deliver that uh, that content at the at the, at the at the right time. However, however. Uh, we need to realize that there are different ways how we can achieve it. And those who will be successful with this will leverage the AI to do particle that. So uh, let me uh, let me tell you how AI can help you achieve this. First, I would say that AI enables businesses to not only harness, but also analyze vast amount of customers' data. And it can help you to understand, I would say, the individual preferences of customers much faster and better. Second, AI brings uh, smart content recommendations to the game, so it really helps to ensure the user's customer journey is, is flawless. And lastly, but most importantly, AI is able uh, to provide content not only in real time, but adapted, and that's very important, I would say adapted based on the context. The content could be optimized on the fly based on, for example, users, users' readiness to buy or based on the brand tone of voice. Etc. And again, this ensures the buyer experience is super, super smooth. So my takeaway from this is that I would say the most successful organizations, uh, the winners, will not only use AI to understand their customers better, but most importantly, they must be prepared uh, to to adapt constantly all the time because the game will be changing much more fast compared to the past when we didn't have AI. Everyone will be uh, will be uh, ready to use AI, but those who will use it smartly will will be the winners in a long time. Uh, I 100% agree. And in order to actually understand how you can win, you also need to think about the future. And today, what you see on the slide, many organizations really focus on uh, on the initial steps of content lifecycle. They focus really on the design and, and creation of um, of content, but AI can do so much more and it will do more um, in the very near future as more companies will explore different use cases. Uh, however, for the success, Vojta mentioned, it's very important to actually uh, close the loop uh, and you need to start focusing, and I, I am 100% sure every uh, marketing person on on, uh, on the call uh, can actually uh, relate to that to understand the performance. Uh, so you need to understand um, how your content is performing, whether all that horsepower that you're getting and, and putting into uh, content creation actually pays off. So you need to understand um, what are the capabilities that you're leveraging uh, to boost your production are paying off. You need to understand whether if you're producing more content, it is performing better, whether you need to optimize it somehow, somehow, or whether you need to completely change your strategy. And it's also an area where AI has a lot of potential in the near, near future. There will be tools providing you recommendations. There will be tools providing you insights that might not be obvious uh, at the first glance. So don't really focus only on the creation part of uh, of uh, the content lifecycle with AI, but maybe start thinking also about the measuring and optimization. Um, and even if you don't have AI tooling there, um, my next takeaway for you guys actually is really make your content data a priority because you will need it. You will need it to understand how your content operations are performing. You will need to understand what, where you actually put those rare resources uh, that you need today to, to succeed and that we all are trying to uh, scrape together and really utilize um, to the maximum where you can where you should deploy them. But for that, you need to have your data in order. So make sure your content data are priority. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think, Martina, that uh, you made a really interesting point about uh, focusing the marketer's uh, marketer's attention to measurement and optimization, because the reality I see on the market right now is that most of the marketers still think about AI in context of generation of, of uh, creation. Yeah? And uh, the reality is that even before AI, most of the marketing teams were always pushed to do more, more, more. The result was that we all marketers were just pr promoting and pushing and creating just more content. And I think yep. uh, most of the users are uh, sort of tired of uh, the amount of content out there. So it goes actually back to my previous takeaway, just focus on the content that makes a difference, uh, that, that that works. It's not uh, it's no longer about who, who produces more white papers or blog posts. Uh, uh, so yeah, I think you made a great point. Anyway, uh, let me bring it again to the marketing side of things. And let's say that uh, all of those takeaways Martin and I uh, were talking about are achieved. Let's say that uh, we, we live in this promised land and everything's great. However, I would say that uh, still, if we do all those things right, there is a very, very fine line between improving and destroying your brand reputation with AI. Uh, don't forget that it takes years to build it and only sort of seconds uh, to, to ruin it. Uh, if uh, you do all those things right that we talked about, I think uh, the the chances are that the customer satisfaction and loyalty of your brand uh, will improve, right? But it could be only one wrong content result with AI, one, uh, let's say, unethical disclosure that is not on brand, one AI-generated post that speaks um, inappropriately on sensitive subjects, and your brand could be damaged or even ruined immediately. So again, a few things that we learned with our customers utilizing our AI capabilities. How can you, either if you work on the technical side or marketing side, how can you help your company uh, really uh, keep the positive momentum in brand building? How, how you can uh, keep the trust and loyalty of, of your customers, even with AI? First, my first recommendation is to adopt the AI technologies transparently. Don't hesitate to talk about it and uh, Myself as a marketing leader, I would even recommend you to show transparently where and how you leverage AI. And because uh, I think people in future will really appreciate if they know that they are consuming content from human or from the AI. And both strategies are valid, right? But uh, people will appreciate that transparency. Second, uh, I would say that uh, respecting privacy is everything in future, and even now, obviously. Uh, we talked about the personalization a bit, uh, but again, I would say it's a fine line between providing the right content at the right time, and let's call it that way, Let's just being creepy or even misusing personal data. Eh? So uh, beware that, 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 that fine line. And last but not least, uh, brand trust and credibility is built on accountability. And uh, from our experience and from uh, the conversations we have with, with our customers and prospects, uh, we would say, or I would say that uh, leading organizations take actually responsibility for the outcomes uh, of their AI models and of their AI systems. Uh, I would say that if you, uh, if you have some of that uh, content items or uh, content published by AI that is wrong, that is, that is not on brand, in the end, Nobody cares if it was produced by AI because it's your content, it's your communication, it's it's your company. So you need to take ownership and account accountability for that. So long story short, uh, I think uh, based on those three takeaways I, I provided, this is one of the most important. And my my tip or recommendation is safeguard your, your brand reputation, even if you are on the technical or marketing side, because it's one one company. Over it, to you, Martina. It's, it's essentially important to do that otherwise as you see on the slide you'll end like these companies um it's actually fairly easy to do that today um it just takes a single employee not following your um internal policies uh, and just selecting a tool randomly and sharing their critical data um so really in order to prevent this you need to do your due diligence right and um, you might be wondering, OK, so how do I do it then? What should I look for? And I have uh, four things for you, how you can actually separate um, uh, the hype from reality, how you can pick a um, uh, solid technology partner for that. And really, guys, 
if you should remember one thing from uh, from my part of the presentation is is this slide. Um, so let's start with the basics. If the foundations are right, if the company has some other certifications uh, such as I, uh, ISO or SOC reports, um, or they have some let's say HIPAA uh, compliance uh, certifications, it's very likely that also the AI functionality is going to be uh, set right, uh, and that they will choose uh, the uh, the vendors uh, thoroughly um, because they want to keep those certifications. Uh, these certifications also go in detail on 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 the on the um, vendors that the company is using to actually build that functionality. And let's be real, uh, today, most of the functionality is leveraged uh, through uh, Microsoft, OpenAI, or other vendors such as Google that do provide these capabilities. But there are some scenarios we really don't know what is happening with the data and uh, that you should avoid. And these companies won't have these foundations, right? And the second um, second indicator is that the company has um, a roadmap towards AI compliance and com the roadmap can be shared with you, uh, that the company is actually sharing with you um, how they plan to comply with uh, some upcoming regulations. Um, there are already some regulations uh, cooking, uh, such as European AI Act, or there are some frameworks that you can use to evaluate your readiness for these kind of regulations. Um, solid companies will have a uh, roadmap or guarantees regarding these, uh, regarding these uh, legislations. Uh, very solid companies when it comes to AI will also follow responsible AI principles. Our responsible AI principles are essentially principles defined um, or pioneered by Microsoft, but they define uh, six areas uh, such as uh, safety, um, such as uh, uh, bias and, and things like that to really make sure that uh, the AI is used uh, safely and, uh, uh, and ethically. Um, and also these companies will provide you an option to exclude your data from further model training. So you, you, you can rest assured that your data stays within the system boundaries. And finally, um, AI uh, will listed, be listed as one of their uh, sub suppliers um, and they will be managed with the same standards and transparency as other, uh, other vendors. After all, today we're living in the world of microservices and it's very common that each vendor is using different services, but those vendors that have policies defined, that have them listed somewhere, you can go to them and they will share with them. What, and especially when they have a dedicated security team uh, that will walk you through those policies, those are serious players. And those uh, are the uh, vendors you can safely uh, choose your solution from. So really those four pillars uh, help you to not really underestimate your due diligence. Uh, make sure you pick your partners uh, thorough, thoughtfully uh, because um, it will uh, help you to safeguard your counter reputation. And the bonus takeaways for today is there is actually a tool that brings all that together and it's uh, Content AI. We really are thinking about all the things that we mentioned today when we are building our product. Uh, we are designing a product for the content uh, professionals to really have a tailored experience that helps them to maximize the value uh, of their content operations. But we do that uh, with enterprise uh, governance in mind and uh, we really make sure that everything uh, is uh, as safe as, uh, as possible to really uh, enable you guys to create that content, maximize the value, but really stay safe and safeguard one of your most valuable assets and which is your content. So really content AI is where all this comes together. Okay, uh, thanks Martin. And that being said, 
Uh, I really want to thank everyone for your attention. I would say when we prepared uh, this uh, this presentation with Martin, we were surprised that both his last takeaway and my, my last takeaway from marketing and technology's perspective uh, were about the privacy and security. Uh, so in the end, uh, both perspectives uh, sort of came together. And I also want to say that uh, there's the one area we take very seriously at Content.ai when it comes to AI, the security part. Yeah, so if you're interested to learn more, we also have a lot of uh, content actually about AI and security produced by our uh, great uh, security department. Uh, so you can go to Content.ai and uh, you can either check out the blog posts or AI white papers. And if you want to learn more, you can either uh, try uh, Content.ai yourself in the trial, which is free, of course, or you can just uh, schedule a demo with our experts and uh, we are here to to, to help you experience uh, Content.ai in, in more detail. If you have any questions, we will either address them in the chat uh, or uh, you can connect with uh, both me and Martin on LinkedIn. We are both uh, quite active. So yeah, uh, we are more than happy to, to chat with you either about AI or about anything else. So thank you very much. And yeah, Martin, have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.